Good day. This is all about Stephen Keshi, the man who gave his time, his life for the national team. The man who coached the national team. The man who won the Nations Cup as a player and as a coach. As a hero, he is not forgotten. This documentary is to tell the story of a man who throughout his lifetime led and led well. We will be looking at the impact he left as a coach. We will be looking at the impact he left as a player. We will be talking to some key stakeholders within the industry. But the most important thing is he has been honored with a vocational center right here in Obazwa, Edo State. What does this vocational center hold for the youth? Quite a lot, if you ask me. It will be a center that will produce the likes of Austin Popo, JJ Okocha, the Kanu Wankos, the Omoka Chi, and if need be, solid tactical dogged defenders like the late Stephen Okichiku Kenshin. We'll be taking a critical look of his life and the things he did based on the story a lot of personalities will tell in this documentary. You can be rest assured it's going to be thrilling, it's going to be informative, but it's going to be impactful as the man Stephen Okichiku Keshi was. Obazua is the in thing. The vocational center is for Nigerians. Thank you. Stephen Okechuku Chinedu Kesh was born on January 23, 1962, in Azare, Bauchi State, Nigeria. He hailed from Ela in Ushimila North local government area of Delta State. Keshi played for clubs such as ACB Lagos, New Nigeria Bank, State the Abidjan, Africa Sports, Lokeren 28, Anderlecht, RC Strasbourg, and Pelis FA. He also featured for the national team of Nigeria as a manager. Keshi achieved success by qualifying Togo for the only FIFA World Cup appearance in its history in 2006. However, he later coached Nigeria where he became one one of the only two people along with Egypt's Mahmoud El Gohari to have won the Africa Cup of Nations as both player and coach. We grew up together. At so that time, we were in Alaska. I was in there. I started in high school. So after my class one, like I did second class college, we was a young and junior. Before then, we both we played together you know, in, at the junior national level. They better to go. It was called they better to go before the junior years. The people better to go that we play games before the normal games. Yeah. And it was like a cutting razor. Cutting razor. I was a captain of that team at that time. We would play against our Michigan games, play against other teams, sometimes against ourselves. So that was. What was that happened? And there, we now, we are not invited to the junior national team. We formed the first junior national team in this country. Then we were called the junior Eagles in this world. And from there, that was how we were invited to the senior national team. The great one. He was invited first before me. That was the day of the beginning. Keshi had his early education at St. Paul's Catholic Nazarene Primary School, Apapa Road, Lagos State. He proceeded to St. Fimbos College, Akoka, Lagos in 1976. He subsequently received his high school certificate at St. Gregory's College, after which he earned a degree from the University of Lagos. During his playing career, Keshi earned 60 caps for the Nigerian national football team, making him the nation's second most capped player at the time of his retirement. He represented the country at the 1994 FIFA World Cup and the 1994 Africa Cup of Nations, captaining the Super Eagles to victory in the latter. After a playing career, Keshi went to the United States to be educated in coaching. In 1996, he was joined by Augustine Egovoyen, who once coached the Nigerian national team. Keshi had been a part of the coaching staff for the Nigerian national team, most notably as head coach for the Junior Eagles at the 2001 African Youth Championship, which also served as qualification for the 2001 FIFA World Youth Championship. Between 2004 and 2006, he coached the Togo national football team, surprisingly bringing them to their first World Cup tournament, Germany 2006. We celebrate Keshi because uh, Keshi's life teaches us a lot of things. They're about the vocational center. 
and it means you're taking your lives into your hand, you're taking you know, your future into your hand. You want to, you know, you, you want to do something positive with yourself, not dependent on others. And that is what Keshi simplified. Let me tell you something. Uh, um, apart from Keshi moving on from St. Fimbas, winning the uh, Principal Cup, going on to win a, a Wafu with uh, a new Nigerian Bank. Bank, you know, captaining Nigeria to win the Nations Cup, coaching Nigeria to win the Nations Cup. You see, go back to that beginning. Go back to that interlude where Keshi was banned from paying for Nigeria because they said he reported late to come. What did Keshi do? Keshi left Nigeria. Keshi did not sulk. He did not cry. He didn't say I was victimized. He left Nigeria and went to Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Made his name there. Nigerian president went to Cote d'Ivoire. From Cote d'Ivoire, Keshi went to Belgium. And he, 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 the exodus to Belgium started with him. So here is a pace setter. Here is a guy who said, I can take my destiny into my hand. So whatever legacy to be looked from that angle, that here is a man who never bowed. Here is a man who left the shores of this country to win the Nations Cup for Nigeria outside the shores of this country. The only Nigerian as a captain, the only Nigerian that won as a captain and as a coach. So if that does not inspire you, if his tribulations that he overcome do not inspire you, what do you want to teach those at the vocational center? Keshi was re-engaged in time for a friendly against Cameroon. He worked as manager of the Mali national football team after being appointed in April 2008 on a two-year deal. Keshi became coach of the Nigerian national team in 2011. In 2013, he led the Super Eagles of Nigeria to victory at African Nations Cup, defeating Burkina Faso 1-0 in the final. I remember I was in um, class 2-3 in secondary school then i saw him when he came with uh, dema benson to ojo road here in ajegule um there was this uh, mechanic workshop we had then run by a guy we call bramondi you know i think keshi came to fix his car so you know the euphoria that greeted his arrival was you know everybody was just like ah, ah see keshi see keshi see keshi i mean i was just coming back from school hanging my bag with my shorts and I, I just saw him, I waved at him, and he was, he waved back. Man, it was as if <laughs> the president waved at me, you know, because then Keshi was a big name, you know. And um, I think ever since then, as a young schoolboy, I was always going to the stadium to see his games. Um, up to when we had his World Cup qualifiers. I remember there was this game, it was on the bench, you know. I was just staring at the bench. He was putting on his Strasbourg jersey and track. I remember that game vividly well. And um, the game, we were down. I think it was against Cote d'Ivoire. They were leading us 1-0. And before you know it, Keshi just beckoned on Westerhoff. Say, I, I want to come in, I want to come in. Immediately Keshi came in, the defense was stable. He's, he was directing like this, you know. His actions, he was like this and... Then I know, yes, this is a real boss. He's a big boss. Yes. And I also remember the game against um, Tunisia. Then we needed that game to qualify. He scored the winning goal that took us to the World Cup. Um, Keshi, to me, is someone I've always idolized. On 18th November 2013, Stephen Keshi set a record in Africa football by being the first African coach to successfully qualify two African nations, Nigeria and Togo, to the World Cup finals. In 2014, he was ranked the number one coach in Africa and 14th in the world. In July 2015, following Nigeria's exit from the World Cup and failed AFCON qualification, Keshi's contract with the Nigerian Football Federation NFF expired and was not renewed. The boys will come with him and man with him. The hate was with him, whatever he was doing. And that was him. You know, he is such a person that does not like cheating. Does not like anything like Nabu Mahmoud. Let me just have Nabu Mahmoud. He does not like anything that is not straight. He will always tell you, look, let us do this thing well. So that at the end of the day, People will see that this is my territory, there's no mistakes on this. 
Kesha was married to his wife Kate Nair Aburime for 30 years. She died on 10th December 2015 after battling cancer for three years. They had four children, Emeka Enyo, Stephanie Enyo, Femi and Jennifer. Keshi had a heart attack and died en route to hospital on 7th June 2016 in Benin City at age 54. He was buried on July 29, 2016 in his hometown of Ila Delta State. Supporting this kind of project, except if you are an enemy of sport. But if you really, really love sport and you know what it is all about, the idea of it, I think you will support it 100%. Because where I come from, like Poland, they also have their own sporting facility for, for, the, for, for players, where they, they, they call it BBC, they call it uh, uh, BBCS, where they have this kind of uh, facility with training pitches, with hotel accommodations, with everything you can think about sport. It's so nice that when a player gets injured, you in there and cooperate from there. So I think that this project, we should support this project financially, we should support this project with all what we have to see that it's a true, it's a dream that we need to come true. And I hope that uh, as a president of the union, I will use my own office and I will use whatever I have to see that we supported this project so that this our dream, because it's not a dream of one person, this our dream can become true. And the uh, legacy the need always remain when it comes to that. Stephen Keshi won the Confederation of African Football CAF Coach of the Year Award in 2006 and 2013. He was also awarded the CAF Legends Award in 2010. After leading Nigeria to her third AFCON title in 2013, he was honored as a commander of the Order of the Niger CON, one of Nigeria's highest national honors by the then President Goodluck Jonathan. Little wonder, going through the rich and landmark legacies of the Big Boss, the HRH Edun Akenzua, the energy of a Bazua, the grand patron of the FKF VTC, a former footballer, thought it wise and important to donate the massive expanse of land to build SKF VTC not only to honor and immortalize the great achievement and contributions of Stephen Keshi, but to discover and develop broadened talent that will represent Nigeria both at club and national teams level in local and international football. Ball. to mentor upcoming you you know to in a kind of redirect them away from maybe taking part in crime along the street and all those things you know make them to believe understand and understand that if uh, the big boss even if could, could make it then they also can also make it they can even make it better than what the man has done in the past so the organizers I, I must give them kudos because uh, they've never relented right from that year. You know, they have been, you know, working up on that. Yeah, we know that the economy has not really done well, even worldwide. So, but at the same time, even at the, at the center of uh, the uh, epidemic, talking about the COVID-19 last year, we were still able to organize just one uh, section on the section of the pony as a tournament so it's been a good one and uh, i must also have to give good thanks and praises to the oba Akinzua that gave us um, almost 1000 um, is it pieces of land or so but i know that he gave us a part of land okay. So they've actually done well. Okay. The Stephen Keshi Football and Vocational Training Center, SKF VTC, Obazua, was established as a sports and vocational training center. It was conceived as a public-private partnership project aimed at immortalizing and to preserve the legacies and contributions of the late football legend, former Super Eagles captain and coach Stephen Okechuku Keshi, aka the Big Boss, who passed on to greater glory on 
7th of June 2016 in Benin, Edo State, Nigeria. In line with its objectives, the SKF VTC has put in place plans to organize the fourth edition of the Stephen Keshi Memorial Lecture, a major feature of the activities heralding the Stephen Keshi Annual National Under-17 Football Tournament. It will also serve as the most veritable platform to unveil the plans for the fundraising game stroke dinner to raise funds for the SKF VTC development project and the fourth edition of the Stephen Keshi Annual National Under-17 Football Tournament. The Vocational Center in Obazua in Benin Edo State, named after the legend, the big boss, Stephen Keshi, is a clarion call to all Nigerians to give back to our youth. It's not just for the immortalization of late Stephen Keshi, but a harvesting ground for future talents, growth and nets to combine skill acquisition and a level playing ground for good football.